And Bill, I love your music so much. Thank oh, you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thanks, <laughs> sweetie. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> That's cool. This is uh, David. What's up, David? Hey, what's up? Hey, you're on Villa Vallo. Um, oh, okay, yeah. On radio. See, it's a true Villa. He's just like, what? What? What's the problem? Oh, you know, yeah. it doesn't make sense that you can't say some of these things, but you can't. Mm. And uh, Anderson, we reset there? Yeah, I'm going to need a couple minutes here, Drew, because you just shoot the S. Yeah, you just, he, we can just shoot the S for a few minutes. What uh, song are we going to hear next? You know? Uh, of ours. Yeah. Oh, oh, fantastic. You're going to play more of my yeah, music. Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully it's a track called Killing Loneliness. Killing Loneliness? Don't be playing yeah. that right now, though. Why? Because I actually dumped that whole 10 seconds, so it would be slow. Oh. Oh. So I got to go back to David, basically, right? No, we don't have to do that at all. You got Nicole up there. All right, I'll take some of the Okay, fair enough, right, fair okay. enough. Take a quick one. Let's get uh, Tom, in fact. Tom, what's up? Hey, I got two quick questions for V-Life. Yeah. Uh, first question is, what does V-Life feel are the biggest differences between American and Finnish metal? Oh, that's a, that's a very articulate question. Um, I'd say the difference is that um, most of Finnish people are clinically depressed. Is that, why do you say that's interesting? Because the, you think it's because of the dark? Uh, yeah, it's like thing? Alaska. Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, the, in the middle of the winter, it's maybe the sun shines for about two hours a day. And yet every Finnish person, you know, we'll look at the Olympics, they're all sort of bright and cheerful and cherubic, you know what I mean? Finnish well, let's say like chance to come out. <laughs> <laughs> but the rest of the year, they're just depressed and... Well, and most of them, you know, I've, I've, been, uh, I've been talking to some uh, politicians, I was saying that, uh, you know, when you live in a climate like that, you should be like uh, a bear. You should be able to hibernate during the, the whole winter. winter yeah. So actually not having like summer vacation, but rather winter vacation where you can just like eat and gather the fat you're going to use later on you yeah, know, yeah. during the uh, summer and when you're all hyper, then that's that's the season to do all the all the, all the the work. So so because they're depressed, the, the music becomes depressive? Well, uh, uh, well that's or, one way or, of putting it. Well, that, that's, that's one reason, but also the fact that the winters are really cold, which means that uh, you got to warm yourself up one way or the other. And uh, I'm really glad that my mother and my father decided to do that nine months before I was born. But us young people, musicians, you know, we tend to do that with guitars. So, uh, so uh, it's a lot of passion that ah. happens in there. A lot of people who really play music for the sake of music. And uh, in other other places in Europe and the States, people start off because of materialistic reasons and stuff like that. Not only, but uh, a lot of times. So, so that's something very, very, um, very weird, very strange to us. Is that it, Tom? Yeah. And uh, my second question is: Sure. Why doesn't, doesn't him take Sonata Arctic on tour? I just waited four hours in line to see him live, and they're great. Um, do you know them? Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, uh, but I know the guys. Yeah, they're from, uh, Sonata Arctica. They're from Finland as well. What does that mean? Oh, uh, Sonat and Arct Arctica, Arctic, Arctic, sound? Arctic, um, Sonate, like uh, like a piece of classical music. Ah. it's in Finnish. Sonata, a son uh, Sonata. Sorry, it's probably Sonate in, in French and Sonate in Finnish. But we're talking about the same thing. But uh, uh, because uh, we don't want to. <laughs> That about wraps that one up. This is now Sarah. What's up, Sarah? Um, hi. Um, I don't know. I'm calling, like, my stepsisters sometimes think that my stepdad makes moves on me. Your stepsister thinks that your stepdad makes moves on you. Yeah. How's well, that? Has he? Well, like, I don't know, because my second oldest stepsister thinks, like, she asked me if he ever made a move on me, but, like... I sometimes think that he is, but I'm not sure, because sometimes, like... Did, did he abuse her? Is that what we're talking about here? No, he's never abused any of us, but, like, like he's married to my mother, obviously, and, like, sometimes I haven't been able to have a boyfriend or to like a guy. I mean, obviously, I've liked guys, but he's acted so much like a jealous boyfriend that he's, like, pushed all of my guy friends away from me. Have you ever been sexually abused by anyone else? Uh, yes, but not him. Come here and give me a hug. So, <laughs> so you, amongst all the, the step siblings, you're the one that had the sexual abuse history. Yeah. Okay, so these kinds of cues, in other words, the boundaries between normal parenting and 
someone who's sort of violating boundaries, that's going to be something tough for you to sort of read, having been sexually abused. Yeah. And so I, I, have you ever been, talked to anyone about this? Have you ever opened your family about it? Only my mother. I've never talked to my stepdad about it. So she knows about it. Did she ever get you treated for that? No. I think, who was it that, that, that perpetrated this? Uh, cousin. Don't you think it'd be a good idea to talk to someone about this? Especially yeah, if you're having, <laughs> yeah. Especially if you're having questions about how your stepdad is behaving. Uh, it's yeah, very like, hard. What? He, like, well, um, for my 19th birthday, he we live in Maine, and he drove me down to Norfolk, Virginia, to see the Viva La Band's concert because him is my favorite band. Oh. So, <laughs> hi. Um, Hello there. <laughs> but um, like on the way down there, he. It was like a constant talk about, like, how he wants me so desperately to stay a virgin, and it was a really uncomfortable conversation, but he wouldn't stop talking about, like, my sex life, but I don't have a sex life. But he was encouraging you to be abstinent, though. Yeah. I mean, that's understandable, but it's like, and when we got, because we had to stop in New Jersey, and we stopped at a hotel, and it made me really uncomfortable, because, like, He's like, come over and cuddle with me, and he says that to me all the time, and sometimes I'm fine with it, but sometimes he says it in a way that just kind of freaks me out sometimes. Well, but that, that, I, I, there's no way for us to be able to tell if that freak out is a remnant of your history or yeah. this guy truly being a problem. So yeah. all I, we can really urge you to do, Sarah, is to get help with this so there's somebody you're engaged with all the time that you can sort of sound these things out about. See a therapist, see a doc, you know, somebody you can talk to, a counselor, and to kind of see these things through. In the meantime, because boundaries are so unclear for you, try to keep other people around, other siblings and things when you're with your stepdad. I think that'd be a smart thing to do. Ville Valo in here tonight from him. That's more That's more of a typical love line call, that last one. Oh, okay. So, that was a rough one. You know, yeah. They're, you're they're, getting all emotional, you know. Well, so in, in the stuff. United States, the abuse of all types is very exceedingly common right now. It was so sad, you know. Yeah. People need more friends to talk to and stuff like that, to be able to communicate.